All right, looking at oil, still slip sliding away here. Uh, you might find this hard to believe, but we're, we're awash with oil. There are some Saudi tankers coming here to drop off still more oil. Uh, this senator is saying enough already. Uh, Kevin Kramer, the Republican from North Dakota, uh, wants to make sure they, they don't drop off that oil here. Um, senator, it's good to have you. I was surprised to hear that this was even happening. Maybe it was prearranged, but you're saying they should turn around, right? Well, I am. I'm just thinking, Neil, if, if uh, we're awash in oil, as you said, everything's filled to the brim. I think there's some swimming pools in Saudi Arabia that have even been, been filled up. Um, why in the world would we need not just the, the traditional amount of oil coming from Saudi Arabia to our refineries, but what it sounds like to be a much, much, much more? We we are energy independent, and what good is independence if we don't if we don't demonstrate our independence? Especially since Saudi Arabia, in my view, is the most guilty party in terms of the oversupply. Going back to, of course, their price war with Russia. Now, I know, you know people forgot North Dakota is a huge energy state, and obviously uh, your folks are feeling this pinch and, and probably very anxious about where things stand now. The president seems to be contemplating doing something for the industry. It includes everything from buying more oil, but in the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to help ease the shock here. But maybe there are other measures. Are, uh, what are you hearing? What are you recommending? Yeah, well, certainly filling the the, the uh, strategic reserve is fine, but I think it's pretty well full, like everything else. One of the things I did is I did write a letter that was signed by a number of my colleagues to to the Fed chairman and Secretary Mnuchin, Secretary Bure over at Energy, to make sure that none of the CARES package, if financial tools, especially these Fed uh, these Federal Reserve credit facilities, don't are biased against against oil or, or fossil fuels. Today, I'm sending another letter signed by a number of my colleagues to the same uh, the same leadership to make sure that, that they have the right sort of uh, the standards, if you will. The early guidance says that um, if you don't have a triple B rating on March 22nd, you're probably not eligible for any of these facilities. Well, March 22nd was long past the impact of COVID-19 and the demand drop and long past, of course, the price drop that was the result of the, <clears throat> the price war between Russia and Saudi Arabia. And I just think it's it punishes those companies who've been in good standing for all this time to now suddenly be faced with this restriction because because of the pandemic and really the the uh, assistance should be there. You know, most of these companies are good companies, but for whatever reason, they're either heavily leveraged or they, they didn't hedge, um, didn't have the, the cash that they needed. And so um, they're good companies, but we need to make sure they get to the other side and we need to be able to restructure some of their debt. Senator, I don't know the latest on stay-at-home provisions in your state, but I know mm -hmm. that it, they did generate uh, some protests yesterday. That's not new. It's happening in lots of states. Um, right. Do you see these rolling back or in your discussions with the governor, do you see these easing up a little bit? Because uh, you get two stories and people are getting anxious about them and, and, and maybe a little cabin fever. But there are still a, sure. a large number of Americans uh, that are anxious about going back too soon. How are things looking in North Dakota? Yeah, it's a great point, Neil, because I think North Dakota is sort of the right laboratory for for um, rolling back some of these stay-at-home provisions. Remember, North Dakota doesn't even have an official stay-at-home order. We have our Governor Burgum has taken the guidance from the federal government and applied the guidelines to, to the state, and the state has largely um, followed them. And certain businesses, of course, are, are required to close down. But, um, you know, we're 10 people for every square mile out here, so social distancing comes pretty naturally. We're common sense people. We're pretty compliant people, as long as we feel the government's doing the right thing by us. So, yeah, there is some anxiety, Neil, but I think this is this is as good a, 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 an experiment as you could have is right here in North Dakota in terms of rolling some of those restrictions back and putting our economy back on track. Sir, real quick, while I have you, there's talk that this measure, this stimulus measure now that has added money for health care workers, hospitals and all is a go in the Senate. Looks like it will be a go in the House in a couple of days. Uh, are you for it? 
Oh, well, I'm definitely for it. And I was for it, you know, several days ago when we should have done it, just like I was for the CARES package several days prior to us voting for it. And it gets a little tiring to see some of these roadblocks put up by Speaker Pelosi, always leading to sort of the same outcome, but a lot more pain in the process. The one thing I worry, Neil, is that it's not going to be enough again, and that there are going to be people left out that, that ought to be in the mix for the Paycheck Protection Program. And I share some of the concern about some of the smaller startups, as, you know, the uh, the independent contractors, the sole proprietors, self-employed folks like that, who don't maybe have the, the sophisticated banking relationship that some of the larger small businesses have had. Um, it's clearly a first come, first serve basis, but that doesn't mean there's not some institutional bias that, that's the result just of, of um, you know, people not not having the resources that they need. So I do worry that it won't be enough, but more is better than none. Got it. Uh, Senator Kevin Graner, uh, thank you very much, sir. Good seeing you again. Be safe, be well, and the same to your constituents.